You know, I complained in a recent video that we had had a cold, wet, just dreary spring, and then suddenly the good weather came upon us, and we, uh, well, so good that the forest dried out to the point where there's a fire ban. Well, <laughs> you have to be careful what you say sometimes because somebody's obviously listening. Now we've had rain, about a week of heavy rain and some good thunderstorms in the last few days. Even overnight we had rain, but this morning I woke up to mostly sunny skies. Nice enough to get out, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm in another area of the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness Area. I am right now, I'm right beside Hobson's Lake, for those of you who know that area. But I'm gonna be hiking to the far end of Ash Lake, an area that I've been a number of times, not as often as some of the others, but often enough. And from there, I'm gonna be pushing off trail into an area that I have not been before, that I've looked at on the map, looks promising for uh, maybe some overnights, if I can get uh, some relatively good areas. It's always hard to look at and understand from the maps. There are some high areas and some low areas there. So that's what I'm doing. Follow along. See what I can find. Uh, nothing promised, but you never know. There's always something to see. Okay, hopefully you can hear me over that brook. Beautiful little brook, over uh, quite full because of the rain we've had the last few days. Just wanted to stop and show you this bush as I stand precariously on some rocks in the brook. This is known as the hobble bush or the witch hobble. Either one will work. I'll put the Latin name on the screen. The reason it gets its name is uh, I don't know if you can see those roots down there. The roots tend to come out of the ground, then go back in, and they're usually near water, for obvious reasons. And, uh, yeah, the unwary traveler can be tripped up by the roots, so hence the name hobble. Now, right now, the berries, as you can see them starting to form on the top side of the branches. Come fall, they will be a bright red berry, and they are edible. They're similar in taste and in nature to the wild raisin, so they have quite a bit, pit, quite a bit big pit in it. But to me, they taste a little bit like figs or dates. But uh, yeah, thought I'd show you this along the way. Okay, here is what I was looking for. You can see there's a stump right here, uh, maybe five feet tall, broken off of an old spruce tree, and growing right in here. It's a couple of year old red belted polypore. Interestingly, there's one on the ground. Uh, it's, I don't even know where that came off of. I'm looking for the bracket that it may have come off of. But uh, this one, yeah, can you see how it's wet underneath? It emits a kind of like a moisture from it. I'm going to harvest this and we'll take it back and we'll talk about its medicinal qualities. It's not an edible, but it is a good medicinal. So the last time I was out, the uh, Labrador tea, at least in the area where I was, was just flowering. And now the area I'm in right now, swampy and wet as you can see, pitcher plants right down here, a little bit of a log boardwalk, a lot of cinnamon fern. Lab tea has gone past the flowering, actually there's the end of a flower right here. And if I turn over these top leaves, see how white they are? That's this year's growth. So it's mixed in amongst, now here's what's interesting, right here next to it is the sheep laurel that I mentioned before, or swamp laurel, depending on, I guess, the uh, genus of it or the specific species. This you don't want to have, this you do. So I'm going to take a little bit of it, I'm just going to take a little bit, there's all kinds of plants through here, so maybe one or two stalks off of each plant, just to replenish my store of well, there's more in here. My store of Labrador tea. Maybe enjoy myself a cup of tea today. So it took me a little longer to get to the end of Ash Lake where I wanted to stop before pushing into the woods. And uh, I'm hungry. Quite hungry, in fact. So, good time to dig out the new Lixata gas stove. I wanted to test it out in the woods anyway. The wood here is very wet. Did take a bit of time to get it uh, going, but you can see now that it's drafting, 
it's going well. Actually, I'm quite impressed. Uh, it is a little tippy, as I mentioned in a previous video. I'll be doing a review shortly, though. I'm getting quite a bit of experience with it. And you can see what I have is one of those lunches that just have to be heated in water. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit back, make some lunch, enjoy that, and then we'll start exploring. All right, that looks like it's ready. Take the pot off. Nice and hot. Let me bring it over to the camera, show you what I'm having. What is this one? Organic black beans with corn and peppers by Seeds of Change. Something new. I haven't tried this before. I'm kind of interested. It's hot. Good. Get a little collapsible silicone bowl. That opened up easy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, hot. Very hot. All right, rinse that out a bit down by the lake. I'm going to buy that again. Wow, spicy. I'm going to buy that again. Yeah. Well, that's nice. I have to bring it. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera in, or it to the camera so you can see it. Black beans, corn, whatever else is in there. Really nice. You know, sometimes it's just the simple things like this. No big agenda. I mean, I did have a bit of an agenda to explore, but if I don't get into the area that I wanted to get into, I'm not going to consider that a failure. How can I? I'm sitting maybe a hundred yards uphill from the lake. The that little stove, I'm going to tell you, I'm impressed with it. Now, it's only had it out a few times. I mean, I've had a number of fires in it, but I've only had it out in the woods a few times. But I'll be doing a review on it shortly. This is, this is enjoyable. Just sitting here. Warm, gentle breeze. Not that warm, but, you know, warm enough. A few mosquitoes around. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this, and uh, when it's coffee time, we'll come back. All right, there's the inside of the stove. It's uh, I let it burn down while I ate my lunch, but now I'm going to stoke it back up to put some water on for coffee. And uh, what I wanted you to see is the ash and the coals in the base there. And because this is just spruce branches, under, under uh, limb branches, you know, the ones down near the bottom that are all dead, uh, they were bendy, meaning they're a little bit damp, but uh, you know, once it got a dynamic of some heat going, it didn't didn't seem to have a problem getting it going. What I want to see now is, I'm going to throw a few more in and see if they'll ignite just off of those coals. So I'm going to set the camera back. Let's see if we can't get this lit up with just a few little sticks. You can see they're not the best, right? That's what this is all about, just a bit of an experiment to see how well this will relight. Oh, there's some snap in a couple of these, that's kind of nice. But with all the rain, I didn't expect them to be dry at all, so... I'm not going to do anything other than drop in these sticks. 
All right, these are damp. Let's see if there's enough draft in the stove with enough coals for it to reignite it itself. Some of these sticks are almost like punk wood. I wouldn't use them any other time, but that's all that was available to me here. I'm smoking. I don't see any flame yet though. I am so tempted to blow on this to see if it's going to ignite or see if I can ignite it that way, which I might just do in a second. But it is smoking pretty good, so it should, uh, should ignite any time now. Alright, I'm a little bit impatient. Let's see what happens if I blow on it. Little flames start to climb up. All right, we're off. That's all it took. Give it a few minutes for the coals to dry out some of this damp wood. Which I'll feed. What I'm finding with this stove so far is there's almost like there's two chambers in it. There's the lower chamber which extends down through the pot stand, getting closer to the ground. Uh, with That's the one that has the secondary jets on it. Then there's this upper chamber, which is the, also the pot stand. And uh, you can put a lot of wood in this. You can probably see now that there's quite a bit of flame coming up. Enough for me to put my water on for coffee, that is. So it's a pretty nice setup. It's uh, yeah, it might be a little tippy, but it's not too bad. It's something to watch for. Okay, that won't take long for that to bring the water to a boil, and then I'll enjoy some tea, or some coffee. All right, my water has come to a boil. Instant coffee because I'm trying to move fast and light today. <clears throat> New coffee brand I've been tasting, and I'll bring a video to you shortly on this one. It's called the Swift Coffee Swift Cup Coffee Company of Gourmet Instant Coffees, sourced from uh, individual farms. This one is from Brazil, and uh, this is what I'm going to be having today. I know, instant coffee, right? Not like me, but it does smell good. Put that in my pocket. Each one of those little envelopes makes uh, six to eight ounces, six to ten ounces, I think, what they say. So, you know, anywhere six to eight ounces should make a good cup of coffee. I think ten ounces would be a little thin. Okay. That smells good, but it is too hot right now. And I just heard some thunder. <laughs> well, I wasn't uh, wasn't expecting it, but I may be in the middle of a thunderstorm before I get back out of the woods. Um, it had rained for the last week, thunder and lightning storm every day, every night, just about. And uh, yeah, so I'm just sitting here enjoying my lunch and having my cup of coffee, and I can hear thunder rolling in the west. And uh, just on the off chance that it was going to rain today, 
I packed a poncho, so I'm prepared. It's just that I've got two and a half, maybe three hours of hiking to do, and it's going to be a wet hike if it starts to rain, but all part of the fun, right? All right, my coffee's still hot. I'm going to sit back and enjoy that as it cools off and then pack up. I will probably turn the camera back on at least once or twice, hopefully. Uh, this was just a simple outing for me today. That's all it was. I was intended to do some exploring, and I may yet. I'm energized by the lunch I had. So uh, I wanted to do some exploring into an area that uh, I don't think anybody gets into because it's just so more, more or less inaccessible. So that's what I want to see if there's anything worth seeing in there. But it will mean some bushwhacking. Uh, if I do that, I'll bring, the, bring you along and show you what I find. If not, I'll just show you what I find along the trail before I head out. All right, coffee time. Okay, it is, it's instant coffee, what can I say? Instant coffee will never be fresh roasted, fresh ground coffee. But, when you're looking for a quick coffee that still has flavor, this is pretty good. Actually, it's very good for an instant coffee. Uh, I haven't heard any more of that thunder. A couple planes going overhead. Maybe that's what I heard the first time, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard thunder. Okay, I'll enjoy this, and then I will get back on the trail. So one of the things I'm trying to add to my knowledge base is a knowledge of mushrooms, edible and medicinal ones. And, uh, uh, yeah, look at this. This is the first I've seen of the season. A little unexpected, and it is huge, too. This is a bolete mushroom of some type. And uh, trust me, I'm not going to give you a positive identification because that's just not something I'm capable of doing. Let's see if I can get the camera down. You see how it's all pores underneath and not gills? And that's what distinguishes this as a bleat mushroom. Now this one is soggy. <laughs> not surprising, it's been in the rain here for a little while, but uh, so it's not something I'm going to harvest. There are some tests to tell whether or not a bleat is edible. The majority of them are edible, and even some of those that test positive for being inedible are still edible. So it's a, it's a bit of a, a learning curve for me on this, but in any case, this is not something that's in good enough shape to harvest. But kind of cool. I'm going to look around and see if there is anything that's coming up through that is in good shape. So right at the base of a spruce tree I was just walking by, right down in the moss, is another red belted polypore. Small one. This one looks like about three, three and a half inches across. Great shape though. Other than a little dirty. That's another one to add to today's forage. I'm hoping to see if I can find a little one just emerging to show you what they look like when they're small. Uh, I've had them, I have them actually at home, much bigger than this. But this is a good healthy one, small but good healthy one to add to the collection. All right, here's a wild edible that I, I, I'm familiar with, but it's not something that I have harvested before. Uh, not for any reason, I just never looked for it, I guess. But uh, now that I know what I'm looking for, uh, here it is. And this, you can see this plant here with the six leaves and then a central stalk coming out of the top of that with another small set of leaves and what were some flowers underneath and they're now past due. This is known as wild cucumber. And if I'm able to get down to the base of it, dig in with a few inches down without losing anything, should be able to come up with a little tuber. All kinds of roots in the system here. Did I get it or did I lose it? Oh, there it is. I got it. Pulled it off its stem. But that is known as wild cucumber. And there's a few of them here. I'm not going to take them because they're not... So well, I'll take this one, of course, now that I've harvested it. But uh, they're not something that's plentiful around here. And I don't know enough about them yet to uh, 
say how prolific they are and if I'm in, in a rather sensitive area for them. So I'm going to take the one that I harvested. I just wanted to show you this, what a wild cucumber looks like. It smells good, it smells earthy. It kind of smells like a carrot right now, but I'm going to clean it up at home and uh, then we'll enjoy it. Okay, I need to apologize. I came across this while I was hiking and uh, I was so excited because I don't often find this, I actually very rarely find this, that I forgot to turn the video camera on. I did, however, take a picture with my cell phone, so I'll include that so you'll see what it looks like on the tree. And this is the sulfur shelf mushroom. And uh, you can see from its bright yellow colors, it's hard to distinguish it for anything else. And this is prime. Oh, is it ever tender. I, uh, it's been a long time since I've been able to find that in the woods around here, so I'm quite uh, feeling quite good about that. So I'll put that picture in here, and uh, of course the Latin name up. <laughs> I don't mind telling you, I'm tired. Good long day in the woods in an area that I don't often come uh, wet, but that's okay because what that wetness did is it brought out a lot of new growth here. Big bag of mushrooms, some birch, uh, not birch, polypores, red belted polypores, some sulfur shelf, some, uh, what was it, wild cucumber, some, uh, what was the last one I picked? Oh, the sulfur, I said the sulfur shelf, didn't I? Oh, Labrador tea, of course. So, just a nice little harvest, you know, you walk along, you, and it wasn't like I was making a concerted effort to find it, but when I saw it, I made sure I picked it up because it's always nice to have. Okay, I've still got quite a hike out of this area, and uh, I think probably some of the hardest area left to go through. So, I am going to close the video off here and just say I hope you enjoyed this hike with me through the woods, but uh, do it yourself sometime. Do exactly what I did today, which was to get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.